So not even questions, it's just that I'll get a client and say, well, I'm eating healthier, I eat organic food, and that's good, because if this, what you're putting in your body is healthier. But I think it's a different discussion when you talk about health and weight loss, right? Because no matter if it's organic or if it's not organic, it's not gonna change the nutritional value of that product. Quick example. Pass this to Chef J if you will. Yeah, yeah, Chef. And this is you for the test. So these are two protein bars, right? Chef J has an organic protein bar. Would you tell me how many calories it has? This has 250 calories. And Dr. Tess? Mine has 190. That is organic. People need to really understand that it's putting your body is healthier, but if your goal is weight loss, pay attention to the back of the label instead of the front of the label if it says natural or organic. To her point, organic is better, but if your goal is weight loss, still pay attention to the nutritional facts of that product. And I think that's such a great point because it's so confusing as a consumer. You're like, okay, I want to be healthy. What does being healthy mean? What is, you know, how do I take care of myself? And I'll have patients come in and tell me that they're eating organic, but they're eating way too much food. You go over time and say, exactly. oh, it's good for everybody. Or, they, or they're eating organic, you know, but then they're picking every wrong ingredient, organic, like organic <laughs> junk food, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just because it's organic, like you're, to your point, Jazz, you know, it doesn't mean it's healthy. From a cooking standpoint, do you pick up a difference in the quality of food between organic versus non-organic food or natural and we can talk about that debate in just a minute. Yes, later. because with organic food it's heavily regulated and it's certified by the USDA. Right. Other foods that don't have that USDA stamp of organic are not regulated. Oftentimes like you said about natural foods, they're not honestly um, regulated by the government and they're not at all. So there's anything in the product and it's not clean and it just has a naturally flavored or natural juice on the on the label and it's a bunch of fillers in there. So any product can put natural on there. Doesn't mean it's not certified by the FDA or anything. It's just natural. No, nope, anyone can put natural on there. You can get a Snickers bar put. That's just natural. natural. <laughs> exactly. I mean organic has some strict criteria. I mean and just to review, like you can't have anything synthetic in an organic product. Or pesticides. Or pesticides. You can't have any GMOs in an organic product. Even the farmland is regulated for at least three, three years, years prior to getting that organic certification. Those farmers really have to prove that they've not had any of those synthetic chemicals in that in that vicinity. Yep. So getting that organic certification, I mean people really, you know, the industry, the organic industry has really taken some time and energy to get that label. They pay fees, they go through regulation, they get a certification. Natural, when you see that label on a product, you yeah. know, doesn't mean a whole lot. You no. know, it means maybe the company is trying to be a little bit more natural and less synthetic, but they have not submitted themselves to any regulatory process. Correct. So from a cooking standpoint, tell me, do you tell can you tell a difference in the quality between organic and natural foods? Mm. I'm curious. Oh yes. Yeah. Because if you get a regular natural piece of chicken and a um, organic piece of chicken, the organic piece of chicken tends to be a lot more cleaner and tender to bite, whereas you get the natural chicken, it's a little bit more tougher and oftentimes filled with water. So the 
chicken breast can be this big. And by the time you cook it, it's like this big. I see that all the time when I'm cooking myself. I'm like, what happened to my chicken breast? It was yeah. so big. They pump it with water. Yeah. What about organic dairy versus non-organic dairy? Can you tell very much with that when you're cooking or not really? It depends on the product. Organic cheese is a lot harder because there's a lot more uh, products that go into making cheese, but when it comes to the milk, it's a lot cleaner. You get a lot more cleaner notes and you can actually tell what the cow actually ate. You can taste some of the grass and some of the lime, some of it comes through the grass. Whereas with non-organic milk, it, it just has this flavor profile of milk. What right. makes it taste like? Fascinating. Well, for me as a physician, you know, this is what I tell patients, you okay. know, what I tell people, and you guys can weigh in on this as well. But for organic, I really say buy your meat and your dairy, try to buy those organic. Really think about the dirtiest crops. You know, the Environmental Working Group has a wonderful list on their website of like the 10 dirtiest crops. You know, try to buy those organic because it really matters. You get a big toxin load when you, yes. you know, when you choose to go outside of that. But focus there and for everything else, just kind of be smart about it. I don't know that it necessarily has to be organic. And watch out for natural. Natural doesn't mean a whole lot. It means everyone's trying, but you're not quite there yet. All right, we'll continue this discussion, but for now, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back shortly. Thanks for watching Old Fashioned Health. Good health from the inside out. organic versus natural. Let's talk a little bit, let's pick up where we left off, Jazz. Jazz right. is the host of our fitness segment, and you know, he, we were talking just a second ago about, you know, how do you buy organic, how do you know what to buy organic, where do you really put your dollars? I'm going to let you jump in. And sure, I, I think that you some think. of the, you, you talked on the 10 dirtiest, I think, foods yes. for pesticides, and I think in doing my research, I know apples and tomatoes are some of the biggest um, offenders when it comes to the, the pesticides and the toxins that are used for that. So when you're in fitness or all you lifters who get their protein, they get beef, they use, they use beef for their protein. Mm -hmm. That's one thing you should definitely get organic because they have, you know, the cattle is fed, you know, with laden, pesticide laden soy and corn and it's just riddled throughout the beef. So if you can get one thing out there, if you're a lifter or fitness and you get your protein from beef, try to get your beef organic. And Jazz, by the way, is talking about the Environmental Working Group or the EWG site. They've labeled the 10 dirtiest crops, the 10 things maybe to really buy organic. And in that you know, list, that can be a great shopping list and a guide for you when you're going to the grocery store to try to figure out which, which you know, food products to spend money on and which ones you can maybe buy that are non-organic. I can't spend everything, all my money on everything organic. That's not good. It's hard to do. You I don't have do money for it. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. But a lot of people, they don't know, so they say, I'm getting everything organic, right? Well, but that does bring up another point because in other countries, like in Europe, you know, or, or places where they really are very conscious of GMOs and you know, their food quality, they will buy less food, they'll consume less food, but they'll spend their dollars on the highest quality of food that they can get their hands on. It's very different from America, right? Where oh, yes. we're more, bigger, better, you yeah. know, buffets, yeah. you know, all that other good stuff. So we're, we're very different culturally, but you know, it begs to the question that, you know, you gotta put your dollars where your health is gonna be, because ultimately we know as a nation we're suffering because of health, and if we maybe consume less but buy higher quality food, you know, maybe our dollars are worth buying everything organic. Don't we have like the suggested. highest food portions, the biggest food portions? We do, yeah. we absolutely do. I mean, if any of you have traveled overseas, I'm sure you've seen that. You know, tell us what you place. think about kind of, you know, <laughs> cooking and, you know, buying organic versus natural and portion sizes here. I don't know if you have a, a thought on that. Yeah, um, I always suggest get your, at least if you can get your seafood or your uh, meat and your vegetables, you know, not so much on the fruits, but at least your vegetables and your proteins organic do it. Everything else can be natural because in a sense the fruit, of course, they're taking the right steps but they just haven't went through the entire three year process to become certified organic, right. which is another uh, certification outside of being just organic. So I would always suggest just that, you know, it doesn't have to be the organic juice, it doesn't have to be the organic protein bar, but the core products of your plate, have those items be organic because that's what you're consuming the most of. You're not consuming a whole gallon of juice in one setting. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, as a, as a physician, what I'm trying to educate 
at least my patients and even the viewers on, is that you really want to pick the foods that you think are going to have the highest toxic load. So that's going to be the meat because they're fed, they've got the different feed and the feed sources that we're getting exposed to. I think it's dairy, you know, and then I think it's those dirty crops where typically they're using loads and loads of pesticides and those pesticides in turn we think are affecting our health. So I think that's a safe bet for most people is to maybe stay within those parameters. If you can buy everything organic, maybe even better, but organic also does not equal healthy as Jazz pointed out in our previous well, it, 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 previous segment. And it can be healthy. It doesn't equal weight loss. Correct. And so that be, Correct. be careful about that. Um, and if they can't even get organic, I think just trying to get it from a local farmer who does take a lot right. of good steps is also a, something you can think about as well. It would be and, cheaper going to the store. But I, I mean, you know, I will say, like, I will see moms buy, like, the organic granola bars or, like, the organic cookies. Yeah. They still have sugar, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sugar is sugar, you know. I mean, junk food is junk food. Just because it's organic, yes, you don't have all the toxins in it necessarily, but it still doesn't mean it's the best food to pick. So lots of confusion with shopping, with labeling, especially here in the U.S. The key is really get educated, really try to understand understand where to put your dollars, what organic means versus natural, yep. any last minute tips? Hey, I always say, if you want clean food, ensure you read the label. There we go. There we go. Exactly. So read your labels. Hopefully we've helped to educate you. Thank you for watching Old Fashioned Health. Good health from the inside now. We'll catch you next time.